freaking first cut. Golly. Welcome to the First Cut Podcast. I'm Rick Gaiman, and this is your round two recap for this week's Genesis Invitational. Joining me to break it all down, Mark Immelman is here. Hello, Mark. How's it, Rick? How are you? Uh, welcome to Los Angeles. Do you want my story? Are you interested? Sure. Hit me with it. So I'm at a junior tournament with my daughter. Flew in here this morning, all excited, jacked to go and watch Tiger Woods this afternoon. I arrive, Tiger Woods withdraws. Is it me? It must be me, isn't it? It must be you. He's he's. I think, I think it's me. You're the you're the illness, Mark. I'm the Black Widow. We have a joke on our CBS announce crew for our walking uh, announcers. You know, when we were coming on the air and we have our assignments, then the walking announcer and the TV cameras show up, and the golfer goes in the wrong direction after they've just made like three birdies in a row. Uh, yeah, that's the Black Widow, and uh, apparently I might be said Black Widow. Uh, at least this week, you might. Tiger Woods, uh, the story of Friday after hitting his tee shot on number seven, withdrew from the tournament. Uh, we just got a statement from Tiger's team describing flu-like symptoms that started last night. He woke up this morning feeling uh, even worse. He was trying to get through warm-ups, and he started to feel a little bit better during warmups, but when he got out there, Mark, he started walking around, he started playing, he got dizzy. Uh, he was eventually uh, treated with, with an IV bag, and we just watched him leave the clubhouse at Riviera. So uh, looks like he's feeling better, but he'll just be playing host this weekend. Yeah, well, look, the truth of it is, uh, here on the West Coast, there's been a lot of stuff going on. Um, I wasn't out last week, um, but the first two weeks with the weather and such, there was a bunch of flu. There was the odd COVID case we heard about too. So it's kind of the season, you know, and sadly um, it, it, it struck our tournament host because look, the anticipation was off the charts. When I flew into LAX this morning, because look, this is the city of angels, the city of champions, right? And here you fly in and everyone, even the baggage agent is talking about the Genesis Invitational and Tigers in the field. So there was this buzz even from the airport and so it's really sad news um, for, for various reasons, but especially that, that he's uh, obviously unwell and, and unfit to continue. 24 holes was probably not the plan when setting the schedule and trying to get into this once a month cadence mark. So obviously very early, too early to tell. And we have no indication, but I do wonder if this does change his plans about playing again before maybe the players or waiting to the players or what that next tournament's going to look like. Perhaps. I mean, I watched a little bit of the Thursday round on, on PGA Tour Live early, and, you know, he was under par there for a long while. And then, you know, that stretch of holes 12 through 16, they trip everybody up around here, and he fell foul on the backside a little bit. So, so there was there was good stuff, uh, and then today a couple bogeys, but made a birdie mixed in there, and and so I wouldn't say he was all sorts of sharp, but he was shaking rust off, and um, you know I had said he was going to get under or inside the top forty. It looked like it was on because he wasn't hitting poor shots. Uh, the putter looked like it was cooperating. He had the good touch around the green. So yeah, it it, it is rough, and and I'm expecting given what he might have seen. Um, that it wasn't that sharp, but he could still score. Maybe it is time to add another event to the uh, to the schedule. Perhaps Bay Hill. You know, he's been pretty good around that course too. That would be fun to see. Uh, the top of the leaderboard is full of plenty of good names that are going to be around for the weekend. And Friday's exclamation point was provided by Will Zalatoris, who made an ace on number fourteen, not only winning himself. A brand new Genesis, but his caddy, a brand new Genesis. It was a one under 70 after making, boy, a pretty, pretty fun card. One, uh, excuse <laughs> me, one eagle, four birdies, eight pars, five bogeys for Will Zalatoris. He is going to enter the weekend six under par in a tie for sixth. It's the kind of place that would suit Will Zalatoris. Look, he lives in Dallas, but he is Californian. So he's used to these Poanio greens that I've said uh, are an attitude. And and oftentimes these greens, if you watch the late coverage in the afternoons, they mitigate putting skill. You know, you're going to see everybody missing short putts. 
but I think I mentioned it in the uh, pregame on Tuesday that I watched him hit. I watched him warm up in Torrey Pines, and it looked freaking good. And, and then I had to giggle, so I'm on the flight over here this morning, and I'm using this device called the NeuroPeak Pro Intel Belt. And Jordan Spieth used this for a while when he was um, struggling with form, and it basically measures your breathing. And it, it helps for stress relief and it helps for, you know, just getting your body in shape and, and to deal with anxiety and nerves and stuff like that. Jordan tried it. So apparently Will Zelatoris did too, because I got a DM in Instagram because there's a public ranking of who gets the most Intel points, right? I had no idea I was leading, but I get this message from Will going, I'm coming for your. And so uh, I was like, well, you better get to breathing. Uh, so, so I don't know, maybe... You know, he's finding this way to just kind of calm the anticipation, too, with some proper breathing. It's a device that a lot of uh, NFL players are using, a lot of baseball players and stuff, too. So perhaps this is it. But I want to tell you, from a physical standpoint, when I saw him um, in Torrey Pines, it looked pretty sharp. It really did. Yeah, game is certainly coming together. Rust uh, being removed at this moment. He's 10th in the field in strokes gained approach for the week, which is exactly what you want to see from Will Zalatoris based on his skill set pre-injury. A couple of uh, closer names to the top of the board. Let's focus on Jason Day, 8 under, thanks to a 2 under round of 69. This got pretty deep at one point because he made an eagle on number one he made the turn in three under mark then you get to that difficult stretch on the back nine where he did give a couple of shots back but jason day lurking around riviera heading into the weekend look ever since he hooked up with chris comer the work he's done on the golf swing has just been spectacular and it seems to be getting better and better and whenever we talk it looks like it's now flowing throughout the bag. He's always been able to make putts, and when he was the number one ranked player in the world, he could hold it from all corners. And he was a decent ball striker, but he said to me back then that you know he was never completely sure. He never really got to an event going, yeah, I can count on my ball striking. Strangely, he was the number one player in the world and a major champion. But now he looks so reliable, and it just seems like week in and week out, it looks like he's playing into some more belief with this golf swing, because if he gets the ball on the greens, he's still Jason Day with a putter in his hand. Um, but I just want to add to that, this the West Coast has so much horses for courses, and Poania Greens, I've talked about it ad nauseum. And then both this place and Torrey Pines, it kind of feels like Australia, with the seaside climates, with the huge eucalyptus trees, Southern Cal is, is like Australia in many respects, and that's why you find a bunch of Aussies always playing well through this stretch of golf. So I'm not really surprised. Um, I'd like to see him kick it on over the weekend. Though. Our number one player in the world, Scotty Scheffler, followed up his Thursday 68 with a Friday 70. It looked like he was on the verge of making a big move mark out into under an eagle on 11, put him four under for the round, and then he makes – a bogey on 12, a double on 15. He does not take advantage of 17, and we are seeing a visibly frustrated Scotty Scheffler this week, even though he's still T12. Oh, goodness. Uh, how many times have I said this, Rick? And I'm going to sound like the old boring guy. But I, even Scotty Scheffler, who's hitting it in a biblical fashion right now, his, his numbers from tees through green are just ridiculous, but you can't hit, out hit a bulky putter. And, and when it starts to get into the psyche, that hole starts looking the size of a thimble, man. And I don't care how good you hit it. You hit one in there close, you don't feel like you can make. Then you miss a green all of a sudden, and then you're like, oh, goodness, no, nah, I'm not going to make the save. And that's what we see happening there. And then you almost put pressure on the rest of the game. And sometimes you try and hit shots that really aren't warranted. And you, you make a poor decision, which the one thing about Riviera, it will trip you up if you miss on the wrong side of some of these targets. So I, I think I don't see scoring getting away because the golf course is kind of bouncy. You know, when I went out there, it's taking on Riviera sort of characteristics, all those beautiful edges and those false fronts and those rises and valleys. They are coming into play and the ball's doing what it should on the ground. But he's just got to continue to hit the ball at the targets, put on the greens, keep giving yourself chances because 
wherever he is. I know Cantlay is doing different stuff, but if you can sort of, if you, Scotty, uh, stack another six under on top of this, you kind of never know what's going to happen over the weekend, you know? One more before we get to Patrick Cantlay and those other storylines at the top. Max Homa followed up his uh, Thursday 73 with a Friday 65. There were four 65s on Friday. It was the round of the day. This started Thursday afternoon, Mark, when Max grinded through the back nine at Riviera to get something in under par, and then he went nuts today. Uh, he moved himself up 49 spots on the leaderboard, T11. Uh, Cantlay is, is nine shots clear of Max Homa, but th this was the turnaround that you were hoping for if you were a Homer, Homa supporter and somebody that was uh, you know coming into the week with obviously great course history. Yeah, um, look, kudos to Max because, you know, when you're well over par as he was, I think at one stage in the tournament, he was three over and well off the pace and almost looking in danger of missing the cut. But that grinding it out that you talk about over the final nine holes or so, that speaks to the champion within. Now, granted, this is an important event. It's Tiger's tournament, which means a lot to all these young players, but it's in Max's back garden. And I'm sure there were lots of family and friends and fans out here because he's popular and you don't want to let them down. So I'm just so impressed with him. Um, when I looked at the card today, that was truly impressive stuff. And he kind of took advantage where he needed to. Uh, I felt like the birdie two on 14 is always uh, a little, little bit of a bonus. And then the pickup on 18, that was awesome. But that was a wonderful round. And look, he's, he's right in the thick of things right now because he'll be out a little bit earlier tomorrow morning you put something up, maybe another 65, you get into double digits, and then all bets are off for the weekend, or for Sunday, I should say. We're going to talk about the man they're all chasing and a couple of guys who will not be around for the weekend. But first, we're going to take a quick break and hear a word from our partners. We need your sports news anywhere. We've got breaking news to bring you. Then get your sports anytime you want them. Big trade news overnight to discuss. Because we know you need sports all the time. A lot of movement in the rankings this week. A legend adds to their legacy. We're bringing you that breaking news right here on HQ. CBS Sports HQ anywhere, anytime, all the time. And we're back. I'm not sure what golf course Patrick Cantlay is playing, but it doesn't look like he's playing Riviera Country Club, 64-65. He has made one, one bogey this week. He is 13 under par, five shots clear of second place. Uh, it's been nearly flawless, Mark. Spectacular two rounds. <laughs> it is, but you expect him to do well around here. Just the way he plays the game, he's managerial. He sort of got that U.S. Open style game around, uh, about him and, and the way this golf course is beginning to play. It feels like a major championship type event. And he went to school just around the corner, so he's familiar with the place and grew up around these parts. Um, but, you know, this is virtuoso to me. The golf course, I feel like, is not playing as nasty as what it can. But I feel like it's on the way there. And on Sunday afternoon, unless we get rain, there's a chance, I understand. Um, this it's going to be really, really difficult. And now you don't want to play just hold on and prevent defense if you're Patrick Cantley because they're going to have to come and get him now. But the thing about this golf course, and this is no knock on Patrick, the one thing he has had an issue with this season has been final round scoring, strangely, because he's normally so reliable. And I had him here last year in the second to last group, and he made a bit of a run, you know, but so it was in the mix. Um, so you're struggling on the final round. You, you just got to make the right decisions. And I saw him make two this afternoon. The one was on the par four, uh, the 15th from the left rough, where he hits it to like three feet, which is freaking impossible because that green sits at an angle to players. It's almost got this beer Ritz type effect through the middle of the green, this huge valley. And with a flag on the back, getting it back there is just so difficult, especially from the rough. And he nestles that thing in there to about four feet. And I was like, holy cow. And then, not to be bothered, they're on 16, which starts playing very hard in the afternoon, the par three, because that green is minute. And you play back into the breeze. Hits on the green, good two parts. And 17, he hits another wedge from the rough and guesses it perfectly into the back corner there. And I was like, not only is he hitting the ball well, he's guessing correctly. 
which is a large part of the equation when you play on these big golf courses where you're going to miss fairways. I don't care who you are. And then if you can make the right call, pick the right club, land the thing in the right place, and still get yourself a birdie look, well, look, that's a tough out for the rest of the field. All he's got to start doing right now, I feel like, is just keeping the ball on the safe side of the flags and pick off the odd birdie because, what's he, like 12, 13 or something right now? I haven't seen the leaderboard. 13. 13. Shark, man. If, if he gets to, he stacks another five on there, that's 18. I, I think he's out of reach. I really do. Yeah, well, if he gets to 18, those guys at 8-under have got to shoot 10-under on the weekend. And I, I agree, uh, this place is getting bouncier. It's getting more mm-hmm. It's getting more difficult. We'll talk more about Patrick Cantlay uh, because he is the favorite to win this when we get to the that portion of the show. Not around for the weekend. A couple of notables. Uh, Wyndham Clark, reigning U.S. Open champion. Keegan Bradley, Matt Fitzpatrick, Justin Thomas, Mark. A 72 followed by whatever he is about to tap in with right now, but he's three over and playing 18. He's going to be at least T63. It was a lot of squares on the card, not nearly enough circles. Justin Thomas struggled in basically every facet of his game this week. Yeah, there's some one and done hurt going on, I'm sure, because he was popular this week, um, especially given how he had been playing. Uh, There we are. (laughs) I have a chance of overtaking Patrick. Gosh, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, producer Josh. Oh, well, you got to lead. You're fine. Um, you like Patrick Cantlay right now. Um, here's the thing that I saw and I didn't see enough. So if I take Twitter hate for this, I will absolutely handle it. But to me, playing alongside Tiger, JT just looked lackluster. It's all, it, I don't want to say it looked like he took the back seat for Woods, but you know, ordinarily, Justin's the kind of guy who's got flair about him. And I know you could see him struggling with the technique and the ball striking a little bit, and that kind of gets into the psyche. But you would have figured that alongside Tiger in that megawatt grouping they had going on, that you'd sort of be up for it a bit more. So I felt for him because it's hard to play um, your best stuff when you're alongside Woods, and then you're struggling with your technique because you start to feel so exposed, you know, because the crowds are massive. They're all there to see Woods. You're not playing well. You feel like you're in the way. There's so many things that start going on in the professional mind. So it couldn't have been a fun place for Justin Thomas to be. And I'm sure right now, um, given how he was playing coming in here, he is not a happy camper right now. That I can guarantee you. As Mark was speaking, he did tap in for birdie on 18. It is much too little, much too late. 72-73 for Justin Thomas. T-59 is the position, and he can go and pack his bag and head home to Florida. Uh, Josh, let's see the updated odds from Vegas. And to no one's surprise, Patrick Cantlay is a heavy, (laughs) heavy favorite. To win the Genesis Invitational, five shots clear of second place. He is minus 150, meaning if you think that he is going to win, you put down 150 to win 100. The next shortest odds, Jason Day, 11 to 1. He's five shots back. Xander Shoffley, who sits seven shots back, is 14 to 1. Luke List at 18. Scotty Scheffler, 20 to 1. And everybody else, much longer than that, Mark. Yeah, well, look. The way Scheffler is hitting it, um, it would be worth a flutter at 20 to 1. Um, but like I say, you can't win, not against this field on this golf course, if you can't convert from inside of eight feet. You just can't. Uh, who jumps out to me there? Jason Day aside, and Alexander is always lurking every time he plays. There's a legal list. Uh, Torrey Pines earlier this year, uh, I get back to the hotel after work, and he's pulling into the hotel at the same time. <laughs> and he gets out the car and I didn't see scores. I'm like, how you doing, dude? How'd you play? And he goes, I played pretty well. I'm like, what do you shoot? He goes, no, I shot a few under. And I was like, that's incredible stuff. And he goes, yeah, this place is freaking impossible. And he was talking about how thick the rough was and stuff. And it looks to me like Luke List, who always tended um, sort of weakish because the putter was bulky. You know, he always was good for like one wild tee shot, but he's gotten so tight. And he's really keeping the ball in front of him. And he's almost allowing the power to come to him. So it's not like he's he's exploiting all this stuff. He's like, I hit it long enough. I'm going to put the ball in play. I'm going to rely on my iron game right now. It looks like he's just got a lot of confidence and a lot of self-belief. And he's, you know, the guy I spoke to in Torrey Pines, the way he talked, and then the way he almost kind of giggled at himself. 
I was like, this is a guy that seems like he has his hands, both hands on the steering wheel pretty firmly. So, so I kind of got my eye on Luke this weekend because he has won in California before. Lots of good putting performances as of late, including this week. He's second in the field in strokes game putting. When you do that and you hit it as well as Luke List, you are very, very dangerous. What do you think, Mark? Are we going to get a Patrick Cantlay runaway Saturday, or does that leaderboard gravity come into play? <laughs> <laughs> it always happens. I don't care how well you're playing. I mean, um, it, it is for real. I, you know, on the way on the flight out here, I've got a lot of time on the plane, and so I'm listening back to stuff. And I was listening to uh, uh, my Jordan Spieth interview, and he was talking about 20 um, in the Masters in 15 when he won, when he was basically cantering to the finish. And then all of a sudden, he recounts a situation where he made a good par putt on the 16th hole to stick. To only to to remain two in front, I think it was, and he had a bigger lead than that, and it looked like he was just downright unbeatable. And this this league, the PGA Tour, is, is kind of like the pros, kind of like the NBA to me. There's always going to be a run. Someone's always going to make it. The leaderboard gravity is always going to set in, and and the guy at the top, you know, you kind of around this place just need to drop one, and someone else picks up one. Those two stroke stroke swings loom large, and the beauty about this golf course too is you could be within 20 yards of the flag and make double bogey in the blink of an eye if you're not careful and so everyone's aware of that so yeah i feel like things will shrink um but look cantley is a pretty solid campaigner and and it looks like he's figured the whole deal out right now well i'm with you i think that when by the time we get to you know this time tomorrow the lead will be less than five but Vegas has just moved uh, Cantlay from minus 150 to minus 160. So they're getting they're getting more confident. Or they the money stay listening, yeah. <laughs> he's rolling in on Patrick Cantlay one way or another. Uh, we will be back Saturday night, Sunday night, to recap the rest of the Genesis Invitational. Lots of fireworks, I'm sure, still to come for now. Big thanks to producer Josh. Does all the hard work behind the scenes. That right there, Mark Immelman, who you can find at Mark underscore Immelman. And you can find me at Rick Run Good. This has been The First Cut. We'll catch you next time.